Home whites for Florida State. The road blues for the Yukon Huskies. 11 national championships, but for the first time in a long time, they are not the favorites to win it in Dallas. Gino Auriemma, the Hall of Famer, four consecutive titles, nine straight trips to the Final Four, but a lot of new faces playing key roles for this UConn team. And immediately we see, Doris, a team that is a lot smaller than we've seen from UConn in the past. And they're very light size, so I think defensively what you're going to see is a lot of switching to start. And this is Brittany Brown, number 12 in white, the senior on Fort Walton Beach, known primarily over the course of her career for her defense. She's going to be running the show, at least for the time being. Did play a little bit of point guard last year. This is the matchup I'm looking forward to, because Shaq Thomas can put a hurt on some people, folks, and she gets the first bucket. And without Romero, you want Shaq Thomas to get off to a great start. A career high of 32 points last year against Georgia Tech. Knowles fans would love to see her flirt with that number tonight. Fighting for the rebound. It'll go back to Connecticut. Gabby Williams draws the assignment. She loses her after she went for the steal. So that's where Shaq is going to be effective. At her size, about 5'11", they'll play her back to the basket. She's an explosive and difficult check. That's Kia Nurse with the bump. And she'll earn a trip to the free throw line, fouled by Maria Conde, the 6'1 sophomore from Spain. You mentioned Romero being the only returning Olympic medalist. Kia Nurse is the only other returning Olympian, played for Canada. Correct, you had to be listening closely, or you were sitting at home going, <laughs> she's wrong. There's another Olympian in women's college basketball, but yes, the only medalist. And, and be honest with you, the, the hamstring issue that's keeping Romero out, I asked Sue Sumrall how much of that was sort of the exertion over the summer. They did everything they could as a staff to keep her fresh. They went light with her in the preseason, tried to back her off her responsibilities. And I think Sue is making the absolute correct decision. You know, this is a team with Final Four aspirations. If matchups fall right, you do not waste the opportunity to rest Romero early. As much as you would love to take out Connecticut, You'd rather be better prepared for possible rematch in the postseason. They've, they will be tested by a strong schedule again. They will be initially at least looking up at Louisville and Notre Dame in the preseason ACC poll, but certainly they think they can contend as Williams picks up her first personal. And to get a first look at Imani Wright, one of the many transfers in women's college basketball who will have an impact on their present team. She, of course, coming over from Baylor, two-year career there, just about seven points, two boards, but capable of much more than that. This is the opener for Connecticut, but this is the second game for Florida State, a win over Jacksonville State, where Wright had 13 points, nine rebounds. They gave up a ton of threes, though. That was one of the things they were worried about coming in tonight. Nurse gets into the paint. And there is Shaq Thomas, that long arm for the rebound. Turnover gives it back to Connecticut. Two decades now on the sideline in Tallahassee for Sue Semrau. She is the winningest coach all time. Four times the coach of the year. They've won a couple of titles in the ACC. She has this program exactly where you hope. It was a long process, though, folks. You think about the year before she arrived, they didn't have a single win in the ACC. On the drive, and one for Connecticut, and a blocking foul. If that's on Conde, that's number two. And Semrau will have to go to her bench quickly. Now, this is the advantage of Collier, right? The ability at her size to use an up fake, get that initial defender off. And I like the call. You know, if you give her that foul call, you're rewarding poor defense. Because she was in no position. And so, I, I, although Conde goes out, Doris, we're going to get a look at a freshman that has uh, got a very bright future, number 24 in white, Nicole Ikamu. I like Ikamu. Well, I was at practice yesterday. I think she's fearless. She's skilled. She looked anxious for this basketball game. I can't wait to see how this kid performs. Brown comes off the screen up top. Offensive rebound. 
The board work is one of the hallmarks of this Florida State program, amongst the best in the country the last couple of years. Well, think about this. That painted area for the Connecticut Huskies, going back a long way, Beth, was a no-fly zone. You think about the likes of Dolson, Stokes, and Stewart. Scoring in a paint was an issue, but look at this. Look at how hard they're having to work just to get a rebound right now, Connecticut. In the past, that's a Stewie board, a Jefferson catch at the hash, and the Huskies are running. So this has got to be a gang rebound team if you're the Connecticut Huskies, because look at the lack of size. Off the bounce, and the offensive foul will be called on Gabby Williams. Uh, I thought the baseline official might have had a, a charge. I mean, uh, excuse me, a block. Let's see. I think it's the right call. I think that's a very good call. Really good job there by Slaughter. You're talking about another excellent defensive player. There are some really good pieces for Florida State. We may get a peek, too, at another question that you talked about and that's the depth of UConn because Williams now has two personal fouls. The Kamu, that shot won't go. How about that crossover though? She did the hard work. That crossover was pretty. Samuelson, their top three-point threat off the mark. Katie Lou, the 6'3 sophomore from Huntington Beach, but she can step outside. Really came on strong late in the season and then got hurt in the national semifinals. Missed the championship game. And missed all summer. And so it'll be very interesting to see. She came in with a reputation as a shooter, but I think there's way more to Katie Lou Samuelson than shooting the basketball. Williams for two from the top of the key. Oh, by the way, we'll see Katie Lou's sister Carly in our next game tonight in the tip-off marathon playing for Stanford. How about that for an opener? Texas at Stanford. Mm -hmm. Be interesting to see what Stanford does without Lily Thompson. Yep. They were both in the Elite Eight last year, and Stanford, is that two years in a row now, I think? They are not the preseason favorites in the league. This year it's UCLA out in the Pac-12. So here's Brown manning the point with Romero sideline with the injury. Swinging around on the wing. Imani Wright, no. Offensive rebound, and it goes. Thomas, strong in the paint. Uh, this young woman knows how to carve space. She's got exceptional timing. And again, the no-fly zone has become an area to attack the Connecticut Huskies. Just getting a defensive rebound early in this one has been a challenge. And Shaq Thomas doing work, and Romero saying, go to work, girls. Junior out of Alabama. They've gotten a couple of prep state players of the year out of Alabama. Jasmine Walker, another one we might see, the freshman. As Shaq Thomas completes the three-point play, the all-ACC performer from a year ago. Off the crossover nurse, and she's bumped by Ikamu. Crystal Dangerfield comes off the bench. And for right now, this is what I believe the depth situation is for the Connecticut Huskies. I think you're looking at six, and she's it. Now, she is not the defensive player Mariah Jefferson was early. She may be a better offensive player as a freshman. Off the turnover, Brown. Spotting up his right. That won't go. Another offensive rebound. That's Chatrice White, the transfer from Illinois. Number 50 in white. She was a double-double machine at Illinois last year. Four offensive boards. There's a second chance opportunity that won't go down. UConn trying to push the tempo, and they will be called for another offensive foul. And that is the third personal on Gabby Williams in the first quarter, not even five minutes in. Yeah, now you have to go to Natalie Butler, the transfer from Georgetown, who didn't see a ton of time a year ago, and now will have to play big first half minutes for the Connecticut Huskies. Obviously, bigger size, a good matchup opposite Chatrice White. If Florida State downsizes at all, it'll be interesting to see how effective she is, Butler. 
But you're, you're going to give Patrice or Shatrice White, excuse me, some minutes here. Oh, but but maybe Conde coming in the game. They may be downsizing quickly here, Beth. White trying to spin it in the lane. Now Dangerfield. Gino Ariama loves how she sees the floor. Pull up won't go. The breakout for Thomas. Ladies it up and in in transition. So you've seen a couple of things. One, uh, foul trouble, which is very unusual for Connecticut. They are disciplined not to foul. Turnover, bad floor balance leads to an easy opportunity. How different things are in stores. Nice handoff there. Nurse to Nafisa Collier, the sophomore from Missouri. Missouri. American Athletic all-freshman team a year ago. So I think Collier has a lot of talent. And I think when she figures it out, she's going to put a hurt on some people, Beth. She's just got to figure out where her niche is. Brown will pull up for two and knock it down. Florida State with the early lead against Connecticut. And I think the advantage for Brown is, remember, a year ago, Romero missed three games with an injury, and she filled in admirably. Bad miss there from Samuelson. So a uh, shaky start for UConn. UConn who tried to make it even worse. And look at Sanderson, though. She's calling for the basketball as badly as she bricked that. As she came up the floor, she was screaming from the opposite side for the basketball. Florida State with the early advantage, led by Shaq Thomas. Yeah, this is an explosive player. We're going to hear from him. This is a lot. Like, if you feel like you're the best defender, show me you're the best defender and stop me. How about that for confidence? from Shaq Thomas, who has started out three for three. She's added a free throw, seven points. And the early lead, the other story for Connecticut, three fouls in the first five minutes for starter Gabby Williams. So you get a couple of looks at Nafisa Kalia, though, right? She had the move earlier where off the bounce, she lifts the defender with a head fake to the rack. That's a back to the basket move. There's a lot to like about Collier's game. I'm telling you, when she figures it out, folks, look out. Elbow jumper, and that is good from Ivy Slaughter. Senior out of Macon, Georgia. has been in the starting lineup for four years at Florida State. And that's included a trip to the Elite Eight a couple of years ago. Last year they were in the Sweet 16. Slaughter gets the nice strip out top. Yeah, she is a tremendous defensive player. Really quick hands. And how about that distribution by Brown? Nice. Already success in the paint for FSU, whether it's pounding it or running it. Samuelson, who's off to a slow start finally breaks through there. I think a really smart move there, Beth, because her first couple of jumpers, she missed one badly. Put it on the deck. Use your size to get to the rim. Make one an easy one, and then see if the outside game starts to flow a little bit. Had been 0 for 4 prior to that. The backdoor cut no good. Bothered by Collier. Samuelson, after going inside, will step back out now and hit the three. Yeah, it's amazing, right? As soon as you see as a, as a scorer, as a player, that ball goes through the red, you know, net, you feel a little bit better. But I have to like that after bricking it, she was coming up the floor in transition. Opposite side was Nurse, and she's pleading for the basketball. I and mean, that's a good sign. That's somebody who's not afraid to miss five or six in a row. No shooters don't worry about the last one, right? Just the next one. And now Connecticut a little stronger on the defensive boards. Final minute and a half of this first quarter of the very first game of our 24-hour tip-off marathon on the ESPN networks. Spinning inside, short on the shot is Slaughter. Got a big 24 hours with the women's doubleheader to start things off. We'll see Gonzaga later tonight. Oregon tomorrow. 
On the men's side, a couple of teams with Final Four aspirations. Advantage on the glass here in this first quarter for FSU. White from outside, Brown. Good hustle to get them another opportunity. And then Brittany will circle back on top. I tell you, the, these five or six players for the Connecticut Huskies, seven right now in the rotation, they're going to play a lot of minutes. You wonder how that's going to look in the fourth period. Slaughter uses that body to get to the left side. Really good job. What a quarter for her. A couple of defensive plays at the face-up 15-footer. That time uses it off the deck. Butler off the back of the rim. Brown checks the clock. Has time to launch. Good if it goes. 17 to 16, Florida State leading UConn at the end of the first. And then right there in third place, the current Connecticut streak. You got to go back to a matchup against Stanford in November of 2014. I think you might have been at that one the last time they lost, 75 in a row. That is correct, as you see the stats from the game. Other than Shaq Thomas, been a little bit of a struggle shooting for Florida State, 7 for 22. Points in the paint, surprisingly advantage Connecticut, although a small one. And how about the offensive boards of Florida State, 7-2, doing work. They see a lot more of Natalie Butler than they anticipated in this first half. Gabby Williams in early foul trouble. And uh, both sides are cold from beyond the arc thus far. Boy, did you see Ikamu get off the deck? She was dealing with Katie Lou Samus, and her vertical is impressive. That's the first on Katie Lou Samuelson, by the way. This is a terrific freshman class that Florida State brought in, one of the top five in the country. Very excited about this group. Runner in and out from Imani Wright. Sanaya Chong. A senior, number 12 in blue for Connecticut. A player they are looking to to have a career season now that she's a senior. Came on highly touted out of New York. Right nice. hits. That's a nice looking move. Good patience offensively. This Florida State team has some players that can create their own shot, Doris. She's certainly one of them. Yeah, I like what they do on the defensive end, and I think Wright is going to be a nice addition. Another player who can create. Imagine if Romero is pulling the strings in the decision-making process tonight, as good as and solid as Brittany Brown has been. There is Romero, sideline with the hamstring injury, a two-time honorable mention All-American. So you can see Katie Lou Samuelson bites on the up fake and Wright puts it on the deck, gets right to that in-between game. That's another area you wonder about Katie Lou Samuelson. Has she improved on the defensive end of the floor? Nurse. Husky swing it around and turn it over on a three-second violation. So you, you've played behind the best class in the history of the sport. What have you been picking up every day in practice, watching from that sideline in critical moments in games? That's what we're going to find out from these UConn players now playing a much bigger role. Conde trying to work the baseline on Samuelson. Blocks are there. Right. Weak side, Collier. You're right, though, Doris. Every play looks different. You're, yeah. you're looking for Stewie or Tuck right out to Mo Jefferson and right into your offense at the other end of the floor. All right, they're going to have to go about it differently. And, yeah. you know, there's a, a very long streak on the line other than the ones we've showed you. It's been a very long time since Connecticut has lost back-to-back -back games. With the killer schedule they have, Beth, that is in jeopardy. Conde high off the glass. 
Second chance for Brown won't go. They have five ranked teams, highly ranked teams on the schedule before Christmas. Butler uses the window, the transfer from Georgetown, who came in off the bench a year ago. At 6'5", really the only size to bang down low on the UConn team. Now this is a mismatch if she can get by her. There goes Thomas. Good help from Collier, and then a foul is going to be called on Chatrice White. Now Shaq Thomas looking at the official. She thought on her rise and fire she had gotten fouled. A little screen that she gets hung up on, but in position to board it. And then Imani misses the jump shot, goes right up between two players, including one of the best athletes in college basketball, Gabby Williams, and comes down with the board. Crystal Dangerfield, uh, new point guard for the Yukon Huskies, off the bench for the freshman. Yeah, I like her confidence, you know, not afraid. She has touched it twice, let it go twice. Nice little in-between game there. Remember, Mariah Jefferson was nowhere near a finished product when she was a rookie. Good checkout. That's really good weak side checkout by Butler. Taking advantage of Gabby Williams' foul trouble, and there's a UConn fast break we've come to recognize over the years. Collier with the finish, and Florida State needs a timeout. Down 22 night side. Look at the job Butler does. Okay, this is not Stewart to Jefferson to Tuck. It's Butler to Bent to Collier. It looks a little different, Rebecca Lowe, but you're 100% right back there in studio, offensively and defensively. Molly Bent now defending on the point. The freshman out of center, real mass. Gina Wariemo lauding her work ethic to us today during practice. Says she's earned the opportunity. Great decision. I know Slaughter doesn't complete the play, but attack the feet of Butler. That was the right read. Kent, the entry pass to Collier. Tell you what, Butler has been a big lift for this team. And staying within her box. I'll tell you. Chris Daly, who is responsible for post work, is sitting there rejoicing, go, boy, my time in the gym is working. <laughs> Natalie Butler makes it an 8-0 UConn run. <laughs> Connecticut doubling up Florida State with points in the paint. And Gino is coaching him up over there now in his 32nd season. And in the last 20 years in their season openers, they are 20 and 0. One of the many streaks at stake tonight. With the shot clock winding down, Brown nails the three. That's the first of the night for Florida State. You know, Beth, we come out of the last break, and without your starting point guard, you had one turnover. And we said that we needed a heady and steady effort from Brittany Brown. She has been all of that. On the steal, Florida State's got numbers right, switches to the left hand. Missed opportunity, and now Connecticut with the push. Uh, and Sanaya Chong didn't quite have the hand necessary, but Butler did a great job rim running and a missed opportunity in transition for Connecticut there. Dangerfield, the spin, the hesitation, and the lay-in! <laughs> Go ahead, young lady. How about that little hesitation? Couple of buckets for her. And you can tell on the offensive end, she's far further along than Mariah Jefferson was as a rookie. There she is, getting her hand in the passing lane as well on the defensive end. Okay. Little spin move on one of the best perimeter defenders in the ACC. And Brittany Brown saying, okay, freshman, let me give you some pressure and see how you react. And she did. Dangerfield making a nice move for a UConn team that you've got to go back 10 years. The last time an ACC opponent beat Connecticut. They have dominated to the tune of 32 wins in a row against the Atlantic Coast Conference. Back to the heady days of the ACC getting three teams in the Final Four back in 2006. And that fantastic Ivory Latta-led 
North Carolina team in 07, the last ACC team to get him. I think about how much Gail Gaston has had that kinetic or the Duke team going. It yep. felt like every year, Final Four, Final Four, Final Four. What a job she did there. Brown will draw the foul. You are watching our number one of ESPN's tip-off marathon. You mentioned some of the teams that you will see. One of the ones I'm most anxious to see are the Oregon men coming off what was a program historic season. Positioned a lot of our experts having them in their final four selection early. I am anxious to see the Ducks. 17 conferences represented. Hawaii, of course, uh, we always go overnight with Hawaii and wake up on the other side. All leading up to the State Farm Champions Classic doubleheader. Kentucky, Michigan State, Duke, Kansas. And if you have not seen John Calipari's current fre freshman class, you have got to take a look. De'Aaron Fox, as good a guard as there is in the country. Samuelson on the drive. Tipped out to Brown. Emani right knocks down another three. She is not shy, confident, quick trigger. Ties it up for Florida State. Samuelson trying to respond, and now the Knowles can grab the lead back. Uh, you can see the maestro tonight is Brittany Brown actually directs Imani right to the corner communicating the whole way saying spread it get to that deep corner How about your backup point guard so far with a four to one assist to turnover ratio For Brittany Brown here's the big girl down low and the offensive foul is going to be called on Kai James I could not be more impressed with the first half of Natalie Butler. Sue Semrau disagrees you're talking about, you know, that feels a little bit like you're officiating size and strength, you know. I wouldn't mind taking another look at it, but I will say this. Natalie Butler's done a very good job. Two possessions there trying to deal with Kai James, and she just holds her position and tries to make it to score over the top. Exactly what you want. 6'5", redshirt junior out of Fairfax, Virginia. Her dad was a terrific college basketball player. Samuelson on the drive, and they're going to draw another foul on James. Let's go back to that last one, Doris, on yeah, the other end. I, I don't get, you know, the officials don't get the benefit of, of this look. Let's see, does she hook her? I mean, you can make the case that she wraps that left elbow around, for sure. And Butler kind of gives a little fist pump. She has done a really good job, Natalie Butler. We're gonna, we, I, I, we talked about it pregame. One of the question marks, how much will she be able to run the floor if this has to be a smaller, speedier lineup this year? And so far, so good. I'll tell you, wh what you're doing right now is you're earning equity if you're Natalie mm -hmm. Butler. You're earning some equity and trust. And then Gabby Williams picked up three fouls in the first five minutes for Connecticut. Hasn't played much. Foul underneath will be called on Samuelson. Well, our next NBA Wednesday doubleheader has KD, Steph, and the Warriors in Toronto to take on the NBA's top scorer, DeMar DeRozan and the Raptors at 8 Eastern. Then it's out to Staples Center for the Grizz and the Clip Show. Both games also streaming live. But what a start offensively for DeMar DeRozan. We're talking about an all-star backcourt with he and Kyle Lowry. What a reception they got when the all-star game we, the North, is ready to prove that that Eastern Conference <laughs> final appearance was no fluke. And how about the Golden State Warriors, folks? From everybody's favorite team to the villains when they add Kevin Durant. You talk about a team that might have some interior rebounding and, and defensive prowess at the rim problems. That might be the Golden State Warriors. We're going to head out to the Bay Area next for Texas at Stanford. A couple of women's teams that were in the Elite Eight a year ago. The steal from Shaq Thomas. And fouled on the drive, and now that will be number three on Katie Lou Samuelson. So two starters with three first half fouls. And it'll be back to Sanaya Chong for Connecticut. Been a tough half. Katie Lou is two for nine from the floor. Gets in position a little late. Pays a physical price to have the foul called on her. 
Newton's final 210 can end fast enough for Katie Lou Samuelson. Although she, you know what you like? Look at, she's not shaking, keeping her head up. You got to show some mental toughness right now if you're her. <laughs> All of last year, care to wager a guess on the number of DQs for the Huskies last season? Well, given the emphasis that this program places on fouling out, mm -hmm. I'm going to say it's less than five. Mm -hmm. I can't remember a game I covered where they had one. And think about that. Now, Rebecca Lobo already noted that they forced 21 turnovers a game. The pressure they applied. How many did they have, Beth? It would be zero. Wow. Bagels, the number of foul outs last year. They've got two players in foul trouble tonight in the first half. Under two minutes to go. And the foul will be called out top on Thomas. That's her first. And one of the things you have to think about when it gets chaotic, if this game wears on and Sue's team is putting pressure on and maybe takes a six or eight point lead and things are not going well, foul trouble continues. Who, who takes control for the Connecticut Huskies? The blue jerseys, Beth, where are those? Which one of these faces are their teammates looking at to say, can you help me here? Yep. Because in the past, you had three answers. You had Mariah, you had Morgan, and you had Brianna. And they were all really good options. Left is the winningest class in the history of the sport. 151 wins, four consecutive national championships, unprecedented in men's or women's college hoops for a single class. That will be the first on Collier. And Shaq Thomas back to the line. Fourth team foul. You may have noticed at the other end, Connecticut shooting two free throws on the fifth team foul of the quarter, instituted a year ago in women's college hoops. Think about how few halves Connecticut has been outscored by. Not many over the years, and certainly through the 75 game winning streak that they are currently riding. And a blocking foul will be called on Thomas. Well, you know, Sue's making that face, but I think that's, you, you had noted Chris Daly's reaction on the other end. I think that Joe Vasily was waiting for Madge to make the call. It almost seemed like Madge's whistle maybe wasn't where it needed to be, but that's a lot of contact for no whistle. Same thing on the other end. Sue Semrau disagrees. Can you believe she's been here two decades? I know. And think about that, Beth. You know, we talk often about Connecticut, the state of the program before Gino's arrival. I mean, they go 0-16 the year before Sue comes. And now she's been in the NCAA tournament 11 out of the last 12 years. You mentioned it, the Elite Eight, the Sweet 16. An incredible run of success including a school record 32 wins a couple years ago. They were oh so close to the Final Four, and they think by the end of the year, with a healthy Romero, that they could have a shot at it if they get the right draw. They're going to need Shaq Thomas, though, who just left the game with a couple of fouls. Uh, we may not see her here till the second Wow, half. what is this call? Okay, like, I mean, the happy whistle here. To me, and again, we get the benefit of the second look. I did not think Dangerfield touched her. Let's see, does she make contact? Okay, she gets her hands off there. She doesn't touch her there. Here comes the, here, here, here it comes. What, where is the whistle? That is no foul. No. Significant because that was the fifth foul of the quarter. So two free throws for right. And this is, this is the area where Dangerfield has got to get better and, and defend consistently. But that's a whistle she didn't deserve right there. Florida State by a couple. Right with nine points, including four of four from the line. Final minute of this first half. And a foul going to be called on Collier. Now just to button up Dangerfield, too, Doris, when you look at that schedule and you see 
the strong point guards that the youngster will face. Next up is Baylor and Alexis Jones. You've got Texas in December. You've got Notre Dame with Lindsey Allen coming up in December, as well as Ohio State and Maryland. How about this back-to-back? -back? <laughs> Given what you lost, okay, you're going to open up with Florida State and Baylor. Baylor with that imposing size. Nina Davis and Alexis Jones. Hello. As well as the number one recruit in the country, Lauren Cox for Baylor. Bears are hosting UCLA tonight. Some big games around the country. Collier on the drive, lost her balance a little bit, bothered on the shot. Emma Degbion has now come on, number 25 in white for Florida State. Great deny. Absolutely great deny by Nurse, not letting Wright get a hold of that. Shot clock winding down. Brown on the drive and the takeaway. And then look at the hustle by Wright to get it back. Plenty of time to find Brittany Brown. Brown gets it, puts it back up short. Will she get a third shot off? No, the time expires in the first half. A 12-4 run to end the half for Florida State. They can sense the need and 11 personal fouls for Connecticut. And how about the job by Brittany Brown, who steps in for Leticia Romero at the point guard. This is a natural two, one of the outstanding defenders in the country. And what a job she did. Eight, point, uh, eight boards, four on the offensive end, six points and four assists. Go ahead, do your work, Brittany Brown. 20 season openers in a row have been winners for the Yukon Huskies. You have to go back to six months after Rebecca Lobo left the court as a national champion in 1995, the last time Yukon did not win their first game of the year. Brown to Conde. She'll drive the lane. May have gotten away. Nope, not with an extra step. And the turnover will give it back. And here is what is at stake. A 75-game win streak. 32 straight wins against the ACC. And 20 straight, as you just mentioned. Openers. And they don't get continuation. The bench of Connecticut jumped up like that was an N1. And that's going to be foul number three on Shaq Thomas. You touched on it at, at, at uh, just a minute ago, Doris. She has really been their best shooter. The rest of the team really struggling offensively. They're only shooting 27% as a team, and now their top star has to sit down. Brown will come out with it the other way, attacking the rim, and it's good. This kid is tough as nails has not blinked bearing the weight of responsibility a position that's not her natural one how about that hesitation blow by you cannot contain me kia nurse you've got nothing for me tonight first foul on nurse this could be the largest lead of the game correct it is indeed Brittany brown the senior who had to move to point guard tonight due to the injury to romero Known primarily throughout her career as the top defender on the floor. Has taken charge so far tonight. Samuelson, pull up, short. That is another statistic, Doris, that is usually such a positive one for Connecticut. The three-point shooting, yeah. not so far tonight, just two for ten. No, just, listen, getting a defensive rebound has been a challenge. The player you believe is probably your most talented, Katie Lou Samuelson, is two for ten. And, you know, she's got to be careful that she doesn't try to press, take, or just, you know, play. Yep. Just be the best Katie Lou Samuelson you can be. That's the only thing you've got to do. Right, misses on the shot. She would be their first option now. Kia Nurse blocked on the drive by White. Is Nurse the one that Connecticut turns to here after that spectacular summer with the Canadian Olympic team down in Rio? 
Well, I think one thing that's interesting to me is Connecticut is not generating any points off their defense, okay? Florida State's able to run what they want, get the shots they want. Nice little move by Nafisa Collier, who's been absolutely terrific for them. That's 14, 14 now for her. But you think about the kind of defensive pressure Mariah Jefferson applied at the point of attack. The steady and powerful defense in the post by Tuck and then the shot blocking ability of Stewart. They're all gone. It was a struggle to get to 45, 50 points against Connecticut the last uh, four years. Florida State may get there midway through the third. And how about Connecticut? They put 32 points yeah. on the board. Three-pointer is good from Gabby Williams. That's a major improvement. I mean, it, you know, two years ago, Gina Wariamo was saying to me, if I could just get Gabby to make a face-up 15-footer mm -hmm. because of what she brings athletically, her versatility defensively. Slaughter was trying to bury Gabby down on the low block. They couldn't get it to her. You've got to pay a price if you're going to become a better offensive player and Gabby has worked incredibly hard on her face-up skills to do just that came on to replace Samuelson last year in the starting lineup for the national championship game the win over Syracuse they started out uh, ended up the season against the ACC now opening up the season against the ACC Shot clock is down to five. Brown sees it. Pull up is good. What a job by Brittany Brown running the point tonight for Florida State. Got beat there. A terrific pass right there by Gabby Williams. Wow, terrific. First basket for Sanaya Chong. I tell you, just face up, little bounce. Yeah, nice job, nice cut by Sanaya Chong. And now Connecticut giving a little zone look to Florida State. Here's the defense going to create some points. Chong will take it herself as Nurse got out of the way. So the defensive switch, and right away it pays dividends. Sue will make the call here offensively. Long arms with Samuelson out there on top. Now can they rebound out of that for Connecticut? That will go to the Huskies. Uh, we've got a timeout with 6 -0. She has been on point. She has contributed rebounding the basketball, scoring the basketball, and distributing the basketball. She has not come out of the game and probably will not come out of the game if Florida State has its way. Right now, it's UConn having its way. They've hit their last four shots and are on a 9-2 run. And they have started to win the war in the paint. They are now up to plus 14 in the lane. And how about that's with Nurse and Samuelson being a combined two for 13. Collier has been absolutely tremendous. What do you see as the biggest challenge, Doris? Those players that it's kind of like moving over a seat on the bench, assistant to head coach, from reserve to being the woman out there that everybody else is looking to, like Nurse and Samuelson. I think the challenges are not one, it's many. And Samuelson, look at that, no hesitation. She was two for ten, didn't hesitate. Nine points now for Katie Lou. Perhaps the biggest thing is to feel a little pressure, feel a little heat, and how do you respond? They're doing it right now. Well, it's time for a response from Florida State. And, and do you get Shaq Thomas back in the game, and can she make a big-time play here? We've seen a lot of uh, Brittany Brown. Wright is not shy, but I want to see Shaq Thomas on the floor. Now, right now, she is sitting with three fouls. Brown will pull up from the wing. One and done on that trip. Long rebound leads to a run out. Nurse still searching for her first basket of the night. The bump and the bucket for the youngster. Nicole Ikamu out of Bolingbrook, Illinois. I like this kid. Number 21 recruit in the country according to a tough schedule. 
But how about their response here in the second half? Mm -hmm. They are uh, up a touchdown, in fact, on Florida State in this third quarter and are shooting 60% to just 33% for Florida State. Yes. FSU does get Shaq back. Yeah. Number 20 in white. And Crystal Dangerfield has checked in for Connecticut. And a near turnover there by Collier on the mishandle. Nurse for three, around and out. Thomas able to tip it to herself. Kia now 0 for 5. Working inside, Slaughter. And to me, every possession should be about getting a paint touch. Great near steal by Brittany Brown, almost came into our lap. And trying to do a little work of the official. This is where they need to go, Beth. I mean, I don't see there, there should not be an offensive possession to me for Florida State that either Slaughter or, or Thomas doesn't get a post up. You, you make Connecticut prove they can guard those two kids without fouling in the low box area. Make them prove it to me. There was a time probably last year, Doris, when a 14-4 Connecticut run would have bloomed into a 24-4 Connecticut run, and it would have been start the bus. But Florida State has taken a shot as Callier has been the bright spot offensively for Connecticut. Do you see what I mean about her? It, it, it feels like she's got all the tools to be special because she's got back-to-the-basket ability. She can handle the ba basketball against pressure comfortably. She's got 18 points now on the night, Doris. And they're, they've all come off assertive moves. There's no uncertainty with, with Collier. There's no hesitation. On the catch, she seems to know exactly what she wants to do. So Connecticut staying in that zone. It's been a good defensive switch for them, yep. Beth. Got size at the top with Katie Lou Samuelson. Shot clock winding down. They move into the man. And then the foul's going to be called on Samuelson, and that's her fourth. With 2.49 to go in the third. I think she has a sense that maybe Brown's in trouble, but that's a really bad decision by Samuelson. You might have th thought you had position, but the reality is you can't put yourself or your team in that position. They're going to stick with her here, Beth. Going to play through it back on top. Number 33 in blue. It has really bothered Florida State's rhythm and ball movement. Thomas will try and create. Look at her elevate in the lane. Missed the layup. Slaughter, offensive board. Comes out to UConn. And they'll give it right back. Right weaving through traffic for the lane. This is one of those moments I'm talking about. We've made some poor decisions, both ends. Somebody's got to grab the reins here. Pass deflected out by Brown. This is just a very young player in a tough spot making a really bad decision, which turns into an easy opportunity on the other end. That's a little bit more difficult than it looked. going to stay with Connecticut. It's not often that the Huskies are on the losing end of the turnover bat battle, but 13 turnovers, just six for Florida State. As Natalie Butler will now check in. Bigger lineup for UConn as she comes in at 
Samuelson stepping back onto the floor, gets it right back for two. Really good job by Collier with a lot of bodies around her to just be patient and kick it right back to the inbounder. Samuelson will have to survive with four. And don't, don't get impatient. You, you know, you don't have a lot of great three-point shooting. Be patient. The ball should still enter the, the interior part of that defense. It's Baseline too much jumper. jump shooting, Beth. It's yep. way too much jump shooting. You can post up a zone just like you can post up a man-to-man -man defense. Nurse, offensive foul on the drive. Second on Kia. Well, she's been out of sorts, hasn't she? Her, her natural inclination is to put her head down, but she's driving right into defensive players that are stationary and waiting for her. Still has not made a basket. Just a couple of free throws tonight. And for as bad as it's been, you had Gabby Williams for four mm -hmm. minutes in the first half. Samuelson has not shot it well all night. You've had rotations that probably won't see time in ordinary environment, and you're still right there. Final minute of the third quarter. Williams gets the steal. Samuelson wide open for the three in transition, knocks it down. Tell you, that's some toughness. Katie Lou Samuelson at one point in this game was two for 10. And all of a sudden, five for 13. And when her team has needed her, she didn't put her head down, she didn't pout, she kept playing. Has hit her last three shots. Thomas, another mid range J. They are not getting to the rim. Nurse. Samuelson wanted to spot up outside the, the arc. She'll try it again. Whoo, that's a little heat check. Now Thomas on the run, and Nurse will slow her down with the foul out top. That will be the third on Kia. Connecticut has gotten much hotter in the second half. Florida State still, yeah, I feel like they've just settled an awful lot in the second half for jump shooting. The zone has been helpful. And again, you don't have to go away from a post up simply because you're, you're facing a zone. Shaq can still get to the low box, pick one defender, and use that strength and athleticism to carve space. Nurse will check out. Dangerfield comes on. Offensive rebound on the miss. Butler cleans it up. Thomas, seven points in the first quarter, just three points since. Final seconds of the third. Dangerfield will come up short. 51-47, Connecticut with the lead as we get set to go to the fourth. They outscore them 21 to 13 in the third. And I would say the favorites coming into the season were South Carolina and Notre Dame. I'd put Baylor right there, Louisville. Uh, you've got an Ohio State team that's stacked, and Kelsey Mitchell is one of the elite scorers we've seen in the game. It's a wide open race. Nothing about what we've seen tonight from the Connecticut Huskies uh, is different than we expected. This was going to be a transition season, and I would say this, you better get them this year. Yeah, because you're adding a couple next. Hot start for Florida State in the fourth. They were just 29% shooting in that third quarter. Romani right now up to 16 points, the transfer from Baylor. Nafisa Collier leading all scores with a career-high 18 tonight for UConn. That's the first jumper Imani Wright has hit in a, quite a while. Second chance opportunity blocked down low. And now no Nurse and no Samuelson, so where do you get the offense? Is it right here with Nafisa Collier, who's been terrific all night? Samuelson starts on the bench with four fouls. Chong pulls up mid-range. Woo, that looked like it could have been a travel. I thought she had happy feet on that. No whistle. Chong will take the bucket. Brittany Brown has been terrific at the point, replacing the injured Leticia Romero tonight. And Brown knocks it down. 14 for Brown to go along with nine boards and six 
assists, got a triple-double watch and tally. A lot of physical and mental toughness in one package in Brittany Brown. Good delivery by the freshman. And how about the deep post position by Collier? Dangerfield picks up her first career assist, the true freshman at the point. And Collier now up to 20 points tonight. Here they show Dangerfield up at the top of the zone. Dangerfield will look for three. Butler's got it weak side. She'll save it to Florida State. Romani Wright goes to the left side with the right hand. That is the most consistent part of her game. A little slithering ability to get to the rack. She's got 16, and we're tied at 55. And how long do you keep Samuelson and Nurse on the bench? How about Chong Adjust? with the crossover and the layup? <laughs> they have been waiting for moments like that for three and a half years. The 24 hours of hoop, Beth. This is a, as good a way to start as you can have. A competitive possession ball game between top-ranked women's teams. The block by Callier. She has been the one that has stepped up tonight. Chong draws the foul. Well, I'll tell you, how about this little move by Shania Chong? Just the crossover blow by of the freshman, the adjustment between multiple white jerseys. That was nicely done. Former high school All-American has started just nine times in the last three years, waiting her turn, finding the right moment. Will it come in her senior season? We've been talking about the tip-off marathon. It leads up to the sixth annual State Farm Champions Classic tomorrow night at Madison Square Garden. Kentucky, Michigan State, and Duke, Kansas. Well, the Armed Forces Classic, Michigan State and Kansas, both lit, lose tough ball games. We'll have to bounce back against high-caliber competition. We talked about the start of the marathon. I know that's not officially a part of the marathon, but that's one heck of a nightcap. Yep. Don't forget the new college football playoff rankings will be revealed in between games tomorrow night at MSG. After a Saturday where three of the top four lost reverse it that ball is not switch sides reverse it under 10 on the shot clock a bit stagnant right here for florida state white will try and take it and gets the roll wow it's a big time play by the big girl Whew, under duress of the shot clock quality defense has to use the bounce that is nice Foul's going to be called on Amani Wright. The Connecticut, I thought they were in that zone. I think they might have gone man and to deliver under duress of the clock with a defender in your grill. Chatrice White, nicely done. The points in the paint story that we've been talking about tonight. UConn has the advantage, 28 to 16. Chong off the hesitation. She has been aggressive here in the fourth quarter for Connecticut. Well, think about that big time shot she hit against Maryland a year ago. Yep. And that, you think about a year ago, third quarter in the 75 game win streak, third quarter against Maryland, about four minutes to go. That was as late as they've trailed in that 75 game win streak. Chong with a huge basket late in that one and doing a nice job here. Undefeated season national championship last year. We got to go back to November of 2014 75 games ago their last defeat A decade of dominance against the ACC 20 years in a row winning a season opener And there is Shaq Thomas with six minutes to go reappearing sure what that stoppage was unless the officials thought it might get a little bit of physicality or extracurricular I think they were making sure there was no extracurricular between Shaq and her defender
Working it inside, Collier. The turnaround is good. You want to score on me, I'm going to give it back to you. And I'll tell you this, you better do your work early on Nafisa Collier because she is absolutely burying defenders and making it easier on herself by doing her work early. Nine for 12 from the floor for Nafisa. And 22 points adding to her career high. Thomas, same spot, does not get the same result. Let's watch the kind of post-up position Collier is going to get. Shaq, you get two feet behind you with her. She's too talented offensively. Brown coming off the screen. That's going to be an over the back on White. And that will be number four on Chatrice White. As Samuelson continues to play with the four personals. And now... Butler goes out, Gabby Williams back in, and out will go White as well. So they both match to each other, Florida State and UConn. That is the fourth team foul in the quarter. So UConn will be shooting free throws on the next one. The Huskies have not committed a foul yet in the fourth. Collier, why not? How about that, Beth? You know, we're talking about Nurse and Samuelson all evening it has been nafisa collier 10 for 13 from the floor extends the lead to six for connecticut right answers big collision collier and uh slaughter and it's going to be a foul on Ivy Slaughter. Texas and Stanford. I heard our own LaChina Robinson with her podcast. Around the Rim. Yeah, and she had Karen Aston who said to her, as deep and as talented as Texas is, and you talk about a woman who has reestablished the great tradition of Texas, mm -hmm. it's Karen Aston. But she said, other than Brooke McCarty and Ariel Atkins, there are a lot of things up for grabs. But they're excited about their outstanding recruiting they have done over the last several years. And well, you better know Texas, and you better be able to recruit Texas. And Karen Aston knows these coaches respect that program. They want their Texas kids to go there. She'll be opposite Tara Vanderveer with those two national championships and just 19 wins away from 1,000 in her career. That's exactly where the ball should go to the post. Can Samuelson respond? Offensive rebound, Williams denied. And a turnover for Florida State on the travel. But every time, to me, regardless of man or zone, that ball's got to go inside. Does she pick up her pivot foot? Let's see. That's a hard one. Drag at best, yeah. maybe. Oh, Kyle, you're almost... Snared that one-handed, but it's Brown that comes out with it. Three on three, right? Last two baskets right at the rim. One in transition. And Juno Oriam are going to use a timeout. Florida State back with... They are ready to celebrate here at Florida State, but they've still got work to do. They are down just a point to the UConn Huskies, who have won four straight national championships and 75 games in a row. And what do the Huskies have with the game on the line without their big three from a year ago? Williams drains the deuce. Back up to a three-point lead. You've got some options. You've got Thomas. You've got Wright. Brown has been terrific. Backdoor pass picked off by Kia Nurse. And then a foul will send Nurse to the line to shoot two. <laughs> There's no way she was going to be denied. You know, she on the back door gets her hands on the basketball, leads with the outside hand, and then they try to come in and take it away. She has nothing, no intention of letting that one get away. Not happening tonight for Kia on the offensive end, but may have just come up with the biggest defensive play 
of the day for Connecticut. It feels like they have been really good from the free throw line here of late. Are they 11 for 15 on the day? Now 12 for 16, I think. This is a team, remember, their entire careers. They've been used to winning games by an average margin of victory of 40 points a night. That's all they've known at Connecticut. Yeah, and, and again, uh, some toughness here, right? Because Kia Nurse, Samuelson, they keep playing. Has it been a, a spectacular day for them? You know, they've had their moments, but she is all over the place, Nurse. Can Florida State make the plays at the finish? Good defense by Collier. No reset on the shot clock. Feels like defensively things have changed for the Connecticut Huskies in the second 20 minutes. Thomas over the top of Samuelson who held her ground. No numbers, good decision to pull it. You've got a five-point lead. Chong feeling the three, and she'll knock it down. Wow. Tell you what, you better be pretty darn sure you're going to make that that early in a shot clock in a possession game. They reverse the basketball and no hesitation whatsoever. There's not a defender within five feet of her. And she lets it fly and the bench reacts. 14 now for Sanaya Chong. Thomas cuts it back to six. After the Huskies had built up their biggest lead of the night. Samuelson. Wanted to lay it up and in before she had it. And they turn it over. Well, after Monday Night Football, it's Sports Center at Night with Scott Van Pelt. You've got the Bengals and the Giants. Sports Center at Night with SVP. Also streaming live on your Watch ESPN app. Best thing I saw today. I love it. Scott Van Pelt doing work. Really poor decision by Collier. I'm not sure why she tried to force that pass. Well, the best thing he's seen today, uh, a Florida State upset. They're working on it. Uh, just a terrific pass and a quick timeout by Sue Semrau. A couple of defensive breakdowns. One on the inbound and then one in that half-court set. 11 national championships. And now Florida State going to extend some pressure. Try to force these Huskies in new roles to absorb some pressure and deliver. And look at Collier handle the basketball, Beth. How about that for a nice pressure release? They're going to go with the experience. Dangerfield is not on the floor right now. And it's taken away by Brown. Brown with the push. And a foul. Slaughter to the line. And Samuelson looks a little bit dinged up. Looks like she might have banged knees when she tried to make that backdoor cut. They have tried on a couple of occasions these backdoor cuts. You, that's a poor pass. Just because you can complete a pass doesn't make it a good pass. You're leading her into help. And Ivy Slaughter is two for two at the line tonight. And what happens when people are in new roles, right? Impatience. And we've seen that on the last couple of Connecticut offensive possessions. Impatience. Yeah, Samuelson really uh, trying to work something out in that left leg after a collision at the other end of the floor. Slaughter gets them both. Two point game. Collier takes it herself across half court. And look at Chong. Chong is going to go get the ball. See, in the past, Mariah Jefferson would just go get it and run something. And Gino instead going to make the play call. Chong splits the defenders. Will take it all the way in and get the layup. Sanaya Chong attacking the rim in this second half. 16 points. She hasn't missed. This was a possession of stopped if it had been at a minute. Correct. If it had been under, uh, under a, a minute. minute. Under a minute. And then it stopped at a minute. So they uh, are going to take another four seconds off the clock since it should have been running when the ball went through the basket. How close was that, though, Beth? 
one tick, one shade of a tick, a tenth of a tick, and it would have been different. Will that be a factor for Florida State here? Three ball, good! One point game! Not sure why she was looking right the whole time, Katie Lou Samuelson. So what play do you run? Where do you go? If you're Gino, do you use a timeout? Yes, you do. How about that by Imani Wright? Well, the biggest streak in women's college basketball history. Do you look to find a way to get Nafisa Collier posted up in deep post position as we've seen her do effectively on a couple of occasions? Now look at that. And she's trying to show Gabby Williams her numbers. Collier does get a touch. She blows by Thomas. Last touch by Florida State, and now the shot clock is off for Connecticut. And so, again, I, I would say a little bit of patience here defensively. You've got good enough defender, Sue Hunston, at the lead spot. And so, Katie Lou Samuelson, your size will inbound the basketball. That's a hold right away. So they will not try and get a steal. So they'll test Collier's free throw shooting ability. Five for seven from the line tonight, a 92% shooter a year ago. She's already sitting on a career high 26 points. If she makes this, it's a three-point lead. She's answering some questions tonight, Beth, isn't she? Clutch, two big free throws. 20 seconds to go for Florida State. And UConn has fouls to give. Uh, that's because you can now make it very hard on this team to run a play. It's only the third team is foul. correct. Yep. So you've got another one here. And again, you can let three or four seconds, five seconds, and then when they look like they're making progress, there's Chong out with five, so Dangerfield's got to play. So Sanaya Chong, yeah, all those I points in the second half. Correct, and I don't think he knew she had four. Nope. May have wanted someone else to foul, although you've got two other players with four. There's your fourth team foul, so they will shoot two free throws on the next one, which UConn would rather not give. And that is four on Nurse. Unless they do want to foul here and not allow the three. Brown fouled on a three! Wow, she's going to get three free throws! It looked like they were confused. Do you want us to foul or not? And that is five on Nurse. Wow. We've seen them struggle in any number of areas. And you were right. It looked like she was trying to go before she got that shot off. And wisely, Brittany Brown goes, okay, you're going to hit me. I'm going to get this shot attempt up. Brown is two for three tonight. When is the last time there was drama in a Connecticut Husky game? Been a while. They won the, at the Final Four last year by, uh, what, 19 and 20? Reminder that the Texas Stanford game has started and can be seen on ESPNU. We will send you out to that game as soon as we are finished here in Tallahassee. What a start to the tip-off marathon. What a terrific, smart play by Brittany Brown. You see, not a great percentage a year ago, just 64%, but she's got three and a wise decision once she felt Kia Nurse Fowler. And this is where, you know, so much of whether your decision to foul if you're a head coach is, how much have we practiced this? Right? Have we practiced it with five seconds, with 15 seconds? Oh, got it 
to get. <laughs> and now Brown needs one more to tie with 13 to go. If you're Connecticut, obviously, you're checked out on the low box by Williams, and Butler is crucial. And then your delivery. And then you've got UConn with a freshman point guard because they're two veterans have fouled out. She misses the third. And B Natalie Butler looks shocked that it's not Connecticut basketball. She was checking out Ivy Slaughter, who put a ton of pressure on her on the checkout. I think it's going to stay with FSU. Well, I, I don't think they have a choice, to be perfectly honest. So here we go, down a point, 12.9 to go. And the Knowles a chance to win it. It is Shaq Thomas off the bounce, into the lane, blocked by Collier. Dangerfield comes out with it and is fouled. And Collier, who's been doing it all night on the offensive end, protects your no-fly zone that you've been talking about in the middle, Doris. She's had a couple of big-time defensive plays, and this young lady has delivered in every aspect. You're talking about one of the most explosive players in college basketball. Uses the left hand so she doesn't come across the body. Shaq looks like she gets her shoulders by. How about the defensive ability going laterally to make that stop? So now it's the rookie at the line. With 6.2 to go, she'll have one more, and Florida State will still have a chance. They will, and if you're Connecticut, are you going to come up and pressure just a little bit with at least Dangerfield to try to make them use some clock on the way up the floor? Florida State does not have a timeout, or their starting point guard, Brown, in a two-point game for the win. Short! And UConn survives to 